Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Know the Pro, and this is April 2020, and uh, glad you can make it here. We have a special guest tonight, and uh, just on the front end, I want to let you know this event is open to the public, so maybe you haven't, uh, haven't been to one of these before, but how this works is, as I admit some new folks into the meeting, is um, these are recorded. We do the Know the Pro at least quarterly in the Songwriting Pro community. I'm going to let that guy in there. I'm trying, Jim. I'm trying. And so there we go. All right. So we do these at least quarterly and we bring in a pro in some aspect of the music business and then we interview them and open it up, open it up for your questions. These are always recorded and they live in the members area of of songwritingpro.com. So if you like this and you want to find more, hey, it's in the members area. If you aren't a member, it's uh, it's a mere pittance to join and have access to all those goodies. So we have CMA Song of the Year songwriters. We have National Songwriter Hall of Fame members. We have publishers, producers, all kinds of stuff um, in there. So if you want the scoop on that, you can just go to songwritingpro.com and there's a thing that says inside look or sneak peek. You can just click on that. It gives you all the goodies. Let you know what's in there, but we're glad you're here. If you're not already a member, and if you are a member, glad you're here. So, tonight's guest. In just a few years, our guest went from living in Little Rock, Arkansas, having barely ever even been in a recording studio. I think I was there the first time he was, uh, to begin to becoming one of the hot new demo singers in Nashville. And now, years later, we won't say how many, but a few years later, uh, he remains one of the top demo. It's one of the top male demo singers in not only in Nashville, but uh, for folks all around the world, and we'll talk about that tonight too. Uh, and he's sung again and again for the biggest publishing companies in Nashville and the biggest songwriters in Nashville, uh, biggest songwriters in the business. So here's tonight to share his wisdom and experience with us. Welcome, Matt Dame. Hey, Matt. Hey. Yay! They're Welcome. clapping. You can see him. You just can't hear him. All That's right, because they're on mute like good boys and girls. That's good. Sure, Very I, respectful. I to follow directions. <laughs> exactly. Although they're songwriters, they're probably terrible at following directions. That's why they don't want to have real jobs. All right, Matt, thanks for being here. My goal for tonight is simple. is to help these songwriters, uh, those watching live tonight and those watching the replay, uh, just to help them on their songwriting journeys, just to get them where they, just to help them get where they want to go. And so uh, it's pretty simple, just to have an honest conversation and, and just to share what you've picked up along your journey with them and just to see if we can point them in a, hopefully a helpful direction. Sound like a plan? Great one. All right, so we'll dive on in. All right, so, uh, and we've talked about this a lot just recently, um, but I'd like to start off by addressing the, the current state of the world, okay? As this is being recorded right now, we're in the midst of a global pandemic, uh, which, you know, read your history books, kiddos, if you're watching this 20 years in the future, <laughs> you've been hearing about it. Um, but people aren't flying to Nashville right now and hopping in a studio full of musicians and, you know, cutting a bunch of songs. That's not how the world is right now. Uh, in really any part of the world, uh, but definitely not in Nashville right now. And so the world is changing. It's not like it uh, normally is, but people still need demos or guitar vocals done. And folks like you still need to make a living. So Amen. change is in the air. Um, so how is, the, how, how is the demo business changing? Can you kind of walk us through kind of what you've been seeing? And Yeah, I can tell you, um, you know, probably – three weeks ago or so now that when they really they really locked it down and, and said hey if, if you're non-essential stay home um so all of a sudden i mean it went from one day i was singing downtown to the next day the doors are closed and we're not we're not, we can't you know we can't have a session responsibly here we can't bring people into one place so um you know it went just it just dried up really quickly well fortunately i've got the capability to record from home um so people were able to contact me and say hey i still need you to sing this can i send it to you and you sing it for me so i was doing probably 50 to 60 percent of that uh, of my work from home now i'm doing 100 percent of my work from home um but you know it i mean it's happening i mean and that's you're talking about trending and you're talking about what you know how is this affecting things i think I think it's a it's it's affecting the people that said no, you just get something better when everybody's in the same place. I I want to I want to be there and I want to stand next to the guy while he's singing it or I want to hear. Well, yeah, maybe. Um, but but some of the people that really really have been against it are now realizing oh, it it worked and it, and it's working really well. So 
we're, I'm really trying to focus on the positive aspects of, you know, not what can't I do during a pandemic, but what has it allowed me the opportunity to, to get better at. Mm -hmm. And definitely recording from home, um, having a lot, having pre-production conversations with my clients. Tell me what you're wanting to get out of this. Um, I mean, it's by leaps and bounds over the last two or three weeks. I think I've gotten uh, more capable of getting my end user exactly what they want without having to feel like they have to be here with me. Cool. So, I mean, you've already, and thankfully been kind of transitioning. So you were more prepared for this than you would have been maybe what, three years ago or something. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think I really got pretty heavy into the home recording uh, where, you know, it was, it was a viable, it was something I needed to invest in and do and learn the trade, spend the money on the equipment, get good stuff and be able to give somebody, if you hire me remotely, you're going to get the same quality of vocal that you would get if we went to ocean way studio or you know uh, blackbird you're going to get the exact same stuff here so cool so i should point out matt's actually joining us from his from his home studio yeah the matt cave the matt cave <laughs> <laughs> right so which uh yeah you wouldn't have been able to do a few years ago uh because your standard operating procedures was go to the row get yep. in an iso booth and sing right. after the band left right that's right band tracks i show up later sing it, go. You know, I don't have to engineer it. I don't have to do anything. I show up, learn it, sing it, leave. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's different now. So what's kind of your process more now? And, and I want to, you know, just kind of open the box for people that still have it in their mind. Like, and, and I'm kind of old school that way too. That's, I love to be in the studio with, I mean, it freaks me out and it scares me that somebody's going to ask me a question. I'm like, what well, do you like this? Or what do you want? I don't know. I speak lyricist. I don't speak you know, yeah. musician. Uh, so it's always scary, but it's always a rush just to see that stuff happen live and, and to see the, you know, the rhythm section working together and, and the band playing off each other and stuff. Um, and it is scarier to just go zip it off to somebody and go, yeah. well, yep, I won't know until, you know, I won't know halfway through the first take that it's not the right vibe. I'll kind of have to wait to, to get it back. But so now what's the stuff is coming across your desk? Is it like, full tracks you just got to add vocal on is it other stuff it's a lot of that you know it's probably most mostly that it's you know there are there are people that are able to remotely track where uh, an end user a songwriter such as yourself can can do like this you can zoom or you can live stream the tracking session and and you've kind of got things separated in a tracking session where people can still social distance so i think the tracking may still be able to ha be handled live um, more so than but there's no reason to have to have the vocalist or a, a single instrument overdub done live anymore. Um, but yeah, mostly I'm getting full. Somebody's going to send me a track and have me sing it, but um, it's starting more and more. I think maybe now up to this point, they've had those tracks recorded before the pandemic started and before the social distancing. And now it's like, I don't have tracks. What can you do? What can you provide me in addition to vocals? So, you know, I've been brushing up on my, uh, building guitar tracks and be, uh, being able to provide somebody a really solid, I don't even want to, I don't want to call it a work tape because that's, it's better than that, but it's not a full demo. It's just a, it's a really, really good guitar vocal. So I've, I've been doing a lot of those. Um, so. Awesome. Uh, so, you know, I, I, one thing I wonder about, like, you know, I've, I've used you since, you know, everything kind of shut down and to do a guitar vocal for me and you did both the guitar and you know the vocal and, and I felt completely comfortable with that because I've known you for years and know your work right. I'm imagining this is not a great time to get started possibly you know if you aren't known it's like oh well if at least if they're if I know them or if I'm there with them um, but how do people find legit musicians and singers and stuff online if they're having to adjust to the new world and it's not like are there like you know I've done the Larry Beard thing before too remotely and I think some people have, it's already started to move that way. Places like Beard Studios where it's like, Hey, I can't be there in person. I'm out of town, but while it's tracking, you can, you know, I can be on live with him right. and here it kind of as it's going down. Uh, but if that's not really happening right now, how do people find like legit musicians and singers and, and that so sort of thing? There's a couple of websites that um, I joined uh, a year and a half ago or so now one's called airgigs.com and one's called soundbetter.com. And those, there may be others, um, but I think those are probably the two uh, most used by the people, especially people that I know from around here. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you create a profile and you kind of list your credits 
can you list not only um, of what you've worked on, but maybe how long you've been a singer? Um, you know, you say who you've worked for, and here's the equipment that I have at my house. Here's here are the things that I can provide for you: vocals, guitar work, drum tracks, vocal tuning, um, putting a melody to your lyrics. If you're a lyricist only, you know there there may be a and you can you set your rates and you set your rates the way you want to set them, and um, you know it's just kind of based on what you're worth and what you think you're worth in the market and either people will hire you or they won't based on what you can provide versus what you charge for that. Mm -hmm. But those, those two sites are good because they allow the end user, uh, once you've hired them to review this person and say, man, this guy knocked it out of the park. I mean, everything was top notch or he was okay. He had to do five revisions for me. You know, as long as you've got time to do that, it, you know, or they can give you a really negative review, which fortunately I haven't had any of those, but um, you know, it's a, it's a checks and balances because it's real time feedback from as, as people are using them. And you'll see the people on those websites that are very popular that, Oh, well, gosh, thousands of people have hired this guy. He's probably, probably pretty good at what he does. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of peace of mind in that, I think. Cool. And so they do have reviews on those sites that people can check out as well. So that's, yeah, and and also the me, I can review you as the writer, um, which is you know interesting. But you know, but I think I would review more based on did they did they provide you with professional sounding track, or did they give you everything that you needed to get your job done? Did they communicate with you in a timely manner, stuff like that? So okay, well that's cool. I was wondering about that. It's like Uber, you know, the driver can rate the the rider, and the rider does the same for the driver. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually, that kind of segues nicely. And, and of course, we're going to open this up to y'all's questions uh, here in a little bit. So if there's something you want to follow up on, make a note of it. And then we, we'll be glad to talk about that later. Uh, but talking about kind of reviewing each other, how does a songwriter set you up for success, especially like in the new world of doing stuff remotely, you know, from your house and working? What's been some like good practices you've noticed, some ways that a songwriter can get the best product? which is, hey, what it's all about, helping you be successful, which is gonna help them. I think uh, putting the time in to, to do some pre-production and thinking, thinking beyond, you know, because up until a month ago, we show up in the studio together and something pops up and you're like, oh yeah, I meant to tell you, do this. Boom, we do it. Mm -hmm. So if, if you can think through all the things that are very important to you, like, hey, I, I really want, like, you can kind of do your own thing, but when it comes to the phrasing on this part, I really want the phrasing just like I did it on so-and-so or, you know, just thinking through the, the things, taking a couple of minutes and, and really, uh, you know, really paying attention to what's the most important to you about your song. Now that's more important than ever. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. of course you're going to always tell your, whoever you've hired to sing for you, please, you know, pay as much attention to this as if you were singing for Bobby Braddock or for, you know, Ashley Gorley or whoever. Um, and, and I, I typically do that anyway. I just treat every song like it's my single, like I'm cutting this for me. So, um, you know, obviously that's, we're going to do that. Um, but I think thinking through the little things because you're not going to have that real time communication, chances are. So mm. if somebody is hiring you to do like a guitar vocal, uh, how am, how much of kind of in a finished form and i'm thinking particularly about phrasing because i had this conversation with a couple of songwriting buddies of mine about like hey we're gonna do a, a work tape and we just got to make sure the phrasing gets right so that if we pass it off to somebody like you that the phrasing is how we want it versus them having to guess like is that something that can be a stumbling block or, or can cause fit sometimes if it's not kind of what you kind of what level does it need to be at for you to know what they want well so it can be and i've, I've had um excuse me, I've had people give me acapella work tapes because that's all they know to do, right? So they just mm -hmm. send it to their phone and they send it. That's fine. But if you're going to do an acapella work tape, maybe set a metronome or, or, you know, tap it out something in time so I can hear one, two, three, boom. And at least that way I know what the meter is and kind of how you're feeling if you're anticipating some beats. So I think having some form of, of, uh, percussion in there if, if you're doing just an acapella thing uh, other than that if you're singing and playing along with a guitar even if you stumble because there's a guitar there I can tell oh he just missed a chord or oh he whatever he hiccuped or forgot the words but he got back in time you know I would know what that is but uh, yeah 
a lot of times people do send me an I'll just sing it like this and there's no reference for timing so right. make sure that there's some kind of reference for you know what what beat and what measure it would be on yeah and so there are all kinds of like metronome apps and garage band and any sort of you know simple stuff like that 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 can apps that you can just do a click on. yes just tap the tempo and you can kind of tap out your tempo and then it's and you can sing to that so cool all right that's good to know uh so what are I'm just thinking about, you know, how they can set you up for success. Um, typically, how does that process work? If someone finds you through air gigs or, you know, they email you, what's kind of the, the process look? Because basically what I want to do is demystify this. And of course, this is going to be your process. Other people may have their own process. But I was like, hey, this is a world we're living in. I want to set these writers up for success. If they want to go ahead and not sit on their thumbs until, you know, the world is back to normal, whatever normal ends up being, you know, I want to make it as you know, non-scary as possible. Sure. And, and they, both sites make it very easy. Um, let's take sound better. Cause that was the one that I used earlier today. Um, so you go on soundbetter.com and you can search, there's all categories from vocalists to instrumentalists to mixing engineers, everything. So whatever you need, but let's just, we'll go in my case, you need a singer, you find male vocalist and, and it's going to open up a bunch of categories. Well, is it rock? Is it R and B? Is it soul? Is it country? Yeah. I want a country guy. Boom. And there's all the country singers. You can, uh, singers can pay to bump their name up the top of the list. You know, you can promote yourself if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. I typically don't, um, I don't do that, but I haven't really had to. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd rather keep the money in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so you you would find me on there, and then you're going to reach out to me and say, "Hey, I'm interested. I heard your I heard your um, snippets that you put on here. I think your voice would match my song. Or would you be interested? Here it is. Is this in your range? What, where can we go? And I'll listen to it and go, "Yes. Hey, I can absolutely do it for you. I can get a turnaround in seven days or less. Um, and then if you agree, then you pay Sound Better right then. You you get your credit card information. You pay that website." And they'll hold the funds. And as soon as I send you everything and you get everything back and you're, and you're happy with it, and then you click, all right, I love this. I'm accepting it. The money then sound better pays me. So it's super easy. Um, that way you didn't pay me for something you don't have yet. Um, you know, there's a, there's a go between. So a mm. lot of people find comfort in that. Like, okay, I'm not just paying somebody. I don't know, you know, $250 for whatever services. And then, what if he just doesn't do anything? You know? Right. Yeah. And so that's, you're protected in that sense. And and both of us are, because that way, if you hired me to sing songs and I, I sing it and send it back and then you just ghost me, you know? But yeah. There's not much you can do about it. Right. Exactly. Nashville's a small, the music business is a small community. People couldn't do that very many times in town before they're outed, but oh, with, yeah. with online business, it could happen in, you know, sure you would get taken advantage of so oh yeah because people from middle of nowhere could be doing that and that's sure. part of the beauty of it mm -hmm. is that you know this is open i mean you do stuff probably all around the globe right i mean definitely yep. other countries and yep absolutely so that okay that's a beautiful thing so a place like sound better you can find the engineers you can find all the musicians you do all that and hey y'all I'm, I'm not you know a spokesperson for sound better so or air gigs or any of that stuff. I'm just trying to set y'all up with some places, some resources where you can go and, and, and get a start on this if it's something you're interested in. Um, I, I think in some ways, the way that the world is kind of changing is, is kind of leveling the playing field for people that aren't in Nashville, New York, or LA. I agree. Because more people are opening up to, hey, let's do work for people out of town or online. And then I don't care where they're coming from. I've noticed that with co-writing. Yep. is that a lot more people are like, hey, yeah, we'll just write on Skype because it's better than not writing or better than writing by myself right, right now. Uh, so I think that that is a good thing. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, like the gear that you're, because some people may be curious about doing their own home recording, that kind of stuff. What kind of, what are you rocking with there in the Mac cave? All right. So I've got, um, I've got a Mac. Uh, I've got an iMac, um, which I think if I had to do it again, I'd probably get a Mac mini and, and go with, um, with maybe a, a, a TV monitor that I could get a lot larger screen for a lot less money. You know, that you got a lot of your money tied up in an iMac in the, in the built-in screen, the 4k. Mm. Uh, it's great. Uh, you know, but I mean, I, I just, that's, that's just my preference. You're not doing graphic design here. You're, I am not. Yeah. 
but I, I definitely would recommend um, Max for because a lot of the, the newest software when it comes out, they're probably going to be Mac only first, and then they'll come out with a PC version later. Nothing wrong with PCs at all, but they're going to do the Mac stuff first. I don't know why. It just is. So mm -hmm. I've got a Mac. This is like a 2016 or so Mac. Um, I've got an Apollo uh, rack mount interface, which is I highly recommend Universal Audio's Apollo. There, there are others that are as good or better, probably. Um, but for the price point, these things are great. I mean, they are foolproof. And um, so I'm, I'm using that. And I use two DAWs right now. I'm using Studio One Professional. And I just started using Luna, which is Universal Audio's DAW that allows me to track through all their plugins with zero latency, which is awesome because, you know, I can put, I can make my voice sound very inspirational and great. But if I had done it two weeks ago in a different DAW, there's so much latency, you, you really can't do that. You have to do it all post. Now I can hear exactly what it's going to sound like when I print it and send it to you. So um, I've got the Slate virtual microphone that I end up using 95% of the time. Um, it's, it's a modeling microphone. So I can, you can tell me that, Hey, I, that, that vocal you sent me was too bright. Can you darken it up? I don't know. There's something about it. Sure. Let me run it through a 47. I mean, I can change to any microphone at Blackbird. It's a cool, cool piece. Um, and if you have the slate software, you can change it on the back end as well, um, which is really cool. But I also have a tube microphone that if you say, Hey, I'd rather just sing through a good tube microphone. I've got a $3,000 Corby tube mic that is awesome as well. I just try to keep the wear and tear off of it because it's the slate mic, which is what I'm using now for audio. Um, it's just bulletproof. So that's what I'm using. And, and man, it's, it's great. Top notch. Awesome. Okay. So somebody reaches out to you uh, through, you know, one of those services or they just get your email or whatever. And, and so they'll hit you up with either. So you can do like, here's the work tape, you can do a guitar vocal or they can send you tracks, whatever it is, you lay your vocal on there and send it back and you get a couple, you can do a couple back and forth like edits and that sure. sort of thing. Yep. Not I, like. I do two revisions that there's what I list on air gigs or sound better. Um, that would be of no cost to you. So I sing it, send it back. You go, Hey, I love it, but change this and this. You send it back. I sing it again. You could do that one more time. And I, I think that's appropriate. Mm -hmm any more than that then i think you really got to kind of weigh okay i've got to give the singer some some freedom here because we're we could be you know 500 miles away instead of in the same room there's just going to be some of that some give and take so as long as but i'm never going to turn somebody down if they need three edits or if they need four as long as it's something on my end mm -hmm. I'll, I'll fix it until it's right but if it's like could you do an option of this and an option of that because i can't decide what i want for verse three or yeah then more than two, then we need to figure on some more payment. But. At some point, the, the songwriter needs to be a songwriter, make a choice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or pay for two versions. You know. And that's yeah. Hey, yeah. You yeah, happy happy to do that. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, what are some uh, common mistakes that you see songwriters make that um, can derail a demo singer, or you know, kind of what do you see pros doing versus amateurs, and and what are some mistakes you see that you know, the flip side of getting the best out of you. What are some things that are going to kind of hurt the product in the process? And Yeah. So uh, this is a pretty easy one for me to answer because it's, uh, I, it's the same thing every time it's so, and the, the professional songwriters that are, that are, you know, they're in contract and they're here and they're writing every day, right? That's their job. They're cranking out four five, six, seven songs a week. They're getting the best of those demoed. The other ones that they don't really mess with, they're dealing with such a volume they don't get too married mm -hmm. what the song is. They write it, they turn it in. If the, if the publisher loves it, they demo it, boom, boom, boom. And they're slinging and they're going. So that's, that's good because they, they know to trust the players and they know to trust the singers. And they say, Hey, here's, here's the song. Sing it. Like I wrote it, do your thing. If there's something not natural, just handle it, you know, whatever. And if, and if it bothers me, I'll have you fix it or change it or whatever. Yeah. It's, there's a confidence there. I think with, the, the, the guys that are doing it every day, they go, I know it's good. I know the, I know it's, it may get cut. It may not, but it's just this, it is what it is. Yeah. Amateur guys, sometimes um, the opposite of that, where they wrote a song and they've had it written for three years and now they've saved up their money and they're like, 
I really want to get this demo. Well, they're so, they've heard their version a thousand times. Mm-hmm. So they're so married to what they do that maybe is not in trend. Maybe it's not the right way to do it. Maybe, you know, like, oh, gosh, a, a country guy wouldn't say it that way or a country mm-hmm. guy sing it that way. And I'm trying to give you the, my experience, not what I want to do, but just what I think, look, I've done this for 15 years. This is what a publisher would want to hear. Mm-hmm. But you're so married to it. You can't let go. Right. So I see a lot of that. And I see a lot of the, uh, the opposite side where there's no structure at all. Well, I don't, I don't care what, whatever you want to do. Well, at that yeah. point, it's not my song either. So <laughs> write it for you, you know, so I think be confident when you're right, write the song, when you're done with it, say, okay, I want to get this one demoed, do your thing. And, and we can have some open communication about it. That's great. And go write another one. If it's not exactly right, go write one that is, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, I know for myself, there's, there's less pressure on each song because I write a bunch of songs Yes. and it's not that, that one or those two that I'm, you know, if I can get this to Garth, this is going to change everything. You know, this is the one that my mama loves and here we go. Yeah. And I think, you know, I heard, uh, you know, somebody say one time, like, you you know, you've listened and this is talking about, you know, a demo versus a cut, but it could be the same thing the work tape versus a demo is like, you know, the, the squeak of my chair in that second verse isn't going to be on the, on the demo. It's going to tick me off. <laughs> you know, like right. I heard it. So it's just so like, I can't like, I want something that's, or you want something that's magical. That's this wasn't in the song. Right. You know, that could be a thing too. If, if you don't, you know, the pros kind of know if the song is there or not. And, and one thing that may be a challenge is as an amateur, like I didn't know my songs weren't there and you might expect for this money there. Oh, there's magic in the, that's going to all come out in the demo. Right. And maybe it doesn't because the magic wasn't there on the song. And then you're mad at the other people thinking they didn't do their job and I didn't do mine. So you've got to, you know, I think uh, in, a, in, a, in that instance, and what, what I would tell any, any amateur songwriter to do is do your homework, hire the most experienced people that you can find, hire the people that the everyday songwriters are hiring, find mm-hmm. the music that are playing on the records because the same guys playing on the records are playing on the demos i guarantee i know it because i know them. so yeah. you know the guys that are playing on blake shelton's records on friday well the following week they're playing at studios that i'm at tracking demos for not only pro songwriters but for amateurs so you can hire them i i think that you need to do that don't fall into the trap of but i can get this guy in florida and he'll do my tracks for 250 bucks well yeah maybe i mean he will, he will, and maybe it's fine, but I can mm. promise you it's fine if you hire the guys that are here doing it. And yeah. the same vocalists, if you, if you find the people that, who are these guys hiring? I want one of those four guys, because there's about four or five guys getting all the work. Yeah. Reason for it. So you find those four or five guys that are doing it, and you hire one of them, and that way you can trust the process and go, I know I got the best. Yeah. Well, I've heard the thing, you can have it fast, you can have it cheap, or you can have it good. You can have any two of those. You yes. can't have all three. You can't have it fast, cheap, and good. You can have it fast and cheap, but it won't be good. You can have it, yeah. you know, fat. You can have it fast and good, but it won't be cheap. You can have it cheap and good, but it won't be fast. You know, like all those things. You pick any two. Yep, that's right. That is that is one hundred percent correct. Yeah, and and there is and one of the things that you know I've been trying to ask myself a lot this question during this time is what does this make possible? Like you said, you're focusing on what it makes possible, not on what it makes impossible or whatever. A lot of those, those folks aren't on the road right now. That's right. And, and maybe somebody like a Blake or Tim McGraw, maybe they're, you know, I'm sure they're taking care of their people understanding that they're not on the road, but they also have time on their hands and maybe like now's a good time to get ahead well, and, and do more of that stuff. They're musicians. So if they're home, even if they're, if they're not on the road with Blake, you would think, well, maybe they're going to go play golf today. No, they want to play drums today. They want to play guitar today. And they're going to, so they are available. And every one of them that I know can record from home. I mean, mm-hmm. so, and they do it. And so you can, you can find those guys and they want to work. Are are they usually through something like a sound better or air gigs or how do you? Um, some are and some are not. Um, and to be honest, I don't know how you would contact the ones that are not, mm-hmm. but I, know that I just went on um it was sound better when I logged on today so I go to the log on screen before I've even logged in and I see a familiar face I'm like who is that James Mitchell you know James is a session uh, lead guitar player mm-hmm. he's incredible 
I mean, yeah. one of the most recorded guitarists in, in country music for sure, but probably in the world in the last five to 10 years, he's, mm. he's great. And he's offering guitar tracks for, I don't know, whatever he's charging for, but he's on there. I mean, you can find the guys just, you know, you can just kind of go look at the credits on some of your, whatever records you're listening to and, mm. and find those guys. I bet, I bet most of them are probably on one of those services. Yeah. I mean, I remember years ago, talking to Blake Chancey, you know, producer, and, yep. and he was one of my publishers at the time going, hey, let's think about this. If we wanted George Drake, you know, demo and cut, let's find his band. Yes. And get them to, the guys that play on his record, let's just hire them to cut the demo and it'll sound like, a, you know, let's make it easy for George to hear it, a George Drake record in here. It's like, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, and we can, they're hireable. Oh, wow, look at that. Yep. I mean, again, fast, cheap, good, but, you know, we'll see. Um, yep. All right. Well, we've hit our, our halfway point already. So I want to open this up to questions. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, keep yourselves on mute until I call on you. A couple of ways you can let me know that you want to be called on is you can chat me and Matt. Uh, there's a little chat box either at the top if you're on the tablet, down at the bottom if you're on a laptop or a desktop, and you can send that out to everybody. Uh, there's another way on participants. Oh, let's see, I see Zave. Ryan just gave me the, the hand signal there. You can, under participants, you can say raise hand and it gives me a notification. And uh, let's go ahead and start, unless you were just testing it, Zave. Hi, can you hear me, Matt? Brett? Yes, uh, sir. Can you hear me? Hey, good evening. Hey, listen, uh, guys, listen, thank you so much for uh, setting this all up, Brent. Uh, this is our first time actually talking face to face. Yeah. And, uh, and Matt, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to come in. Um, I thought it was Matt Damon when I saw the email. I thought, they were great, they brought in the, uh, the, the hitman from What's That Movie? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jason Byrne, that's the guy. There we go, exactly. Um, uh, boy, I could ask Matt questions all night here. Uh, Matt, um, I, I'd imagine a lot of the guys here tonight, uh, like me, record at home. And, you know, I sing and do all that sort of stuff. So I tend not to use... Um, I, I'm familiar with the site you're talking about. I, I tend not to use studios in that because um, I think unless you've got the go-ahead from a publisher and you know you've got a really good song, you could spend like six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a studio, whereas I can do it here at home for like free. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not saying you're charging like eight hundred dollars to to sing a part, but do you get a lot of people coming to you? With, with a song that maybe they shouldn't be spending the money on to hire someone to sing it because, quite frankly, the song is just not there. Because um, I, I do see some people on some of the other forums and they're they're going off spending money on, on studios to do demos. And, and you'll see it all the time, even from Brent and other people saying, guys, you know, unless you really know you've got a, a hit there, mm -hmm. you, you know, spending a lot of money on a demo and then a publisher hears it and goes, fella... <laughs> this ain't great. You know, I just curious, do you, do you get much of that kind of stuff coming in um, where you're, you're listening to the song and you're going, boy, you know, you really don't need to spend, spend the money on this. Yeah. You know, I do. Um, Dave, I get, um, and I've, I kind of had to come to terms with that early on in my singing career where, you know, cause people want to ask me, what do you think of my song? What do you think? And I'm just, I'm not a song critic. Um, so, but I, I try to tell people, I point people to NSAI. I try to point people to Brent Baxter and say, hey, let, let somebody that knows what a hit song sounds like at least listen to it in its rawest form. And then if it's something to where you guys go, hey, you know, this is, this is pretty good. Um, there, there are ways that you can kind of get in, but without doing a full demo, maybe you could say, hey, can you do a guitar vocal for me? and to a click track. And that way, if we want to build it up later, I can still use your acoustic guitar or your vocal and I can build this into a demo, but a good guitar vocal can really move the needle and you can spend 300 bucks as opposed to 800 bucks. And, and that's a, right. that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good deal um, for that. But, you know, I did have to kind of step back and, and because yeah, part of me wants to tell people, Oh, the song, it's, there's not a good way to say it. There's, for me, there's, it's a no-win situation for me. And it's not because I want the work. It's just my opinion is just one of many. And, you know, what do I know? I may think something's terrible and it ends up being a hit. So I'm just a singer. But, but I can kind of point you in those directions a little bit. 
yeah, I mean, if I was going to use a singer, I don't know whether you've ever done anything like this. I find, um, I don't know, maybe you can give me a couple of pointers here. The thing about doing it on your own at home is, is that you, uh, sorry, I keep looking at the TV instead of the camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My TV is over here. Yeah. Um, uh, backing vocals. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm, I, I cannot sing a harmony with my own voice. I can't sing in a third or a fifth. So I will just sing again on the, on the chorus, maybe just to kind of double it up. Um, I don't know whether you managed to do that, whereby you sing a bit and then you do your own harmony with it. Um, uh, uh, do you do that often or is that like a, a, just too awkward to do? Oh no, I do it all the time. That's, that's something that probably has got me, hired as many times because it saves people money because they can hire me i don't charge any more to sing background vocals than i do so if you hire me to sing a demo for you i'm going to sing the lead and all the harmonies for the same price so other singers you may have to pay them 150 dollars to sing a lead vocal and then you got to go pay somebody 100 bucks to sing backgrounds i can do i've just luckily have god bless me with the ability to to hear harmonies so i i do them and i give them out so yeah. Can I just ask, sorry, I'm hot. Can I ask you one last quick one, Matt? Yeah, one quick one. Just one quick one. We're cool. Can you re can you recommend a good DS or I've got a very bad S thing when I sing. Not when I speak, but when I sing. There is uh, Universal Audio has a really good DSer, um, but I think a, probably a little more affordable DSer is um, I'm trying to think of the name of it. It's um, it's in the Slate Everything Bundle, and I think it's called E. It's E I O S I S, whatever, however you would pronounce e -I -I <laughs> Iosis. It's a really good one too, and there's some really good presets. You can actually focus right in on acoustic guitar squeaks or whatever. So there, there's a couple options there. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That's super that you use a DS, sir. I think it's so stupendous. <laughs> I'm using one right now, and it's super. <laughs> so good. So, so good. All right. I'm being silly. Uh, thanks, Zave. All right. Uh, next up, we have a chat. We'll kind of bounce between the two. Is uh, Joe Guerrero says, thank you, uh, Matt. Um, but also, let's see here. What else is he saying? Let me get back to that. All right. So his question is about uh, keys. You know, it, my question is, do you find that if you are doing a demo, does the writer contact you to find out what key is best for you? Kind of when in the process is a good time to check with that? Because um, he uses some people, he knows their keys. But if you use someone like you, he wouldn't have the first you know, idea. So when's a good time in the process to talk so, about keys? Yeah, pretty, pretty early. I mean, as soon as you, as soon as you know, okay, I love the song. I want to demo it and I want to use Matt because I haven't used him and I, I, I like his stuff online. So you would, um, you can contact me at, excuse me, <laughs> had I stayed dinner before I came on here. Uh, <laughs> Matt Dane music at gmail.com is my email address. And I'm sure we can get this contact info up at, at a later date or if you guys mm -hmm. uh, Matt Dane music at gmail.com is my email. You can send me a work tape there, uh, just an MP3. It can be a voice memo on your phone, but just, you know, something with a little tempo um, so that I can check and make sure that the, I know that the meter and, the, and I can check the key for you super quickly awesome thank you uh next up i believe was kathy rose hey kathy just unmute yourself you, and you're good to go. go okay um just a real quick question for you when somebody hires you to um you know sing a song or whatever and say you're doing the melody as well like there's doing like a very raw work tape they've you know sung an acapella or whatever mm -hmm. um like how do the rights of that go like you're paid for it so how does that work so when you if you pay me for a, a demonstration recording and that's that's what it is so you you i'll sing it i don't own any you're paying me one time and it's a it's kind of an understood there's not even a contract that goes with that it's a demonstration recording if you the difference being um the next level would be hey i want to pitch this to film and TV because I think this would be really cool in a Netflix show. If you take that to LA and, and before they even listen to it, they're going to say, I need to work for hire on everybody that's everybody that's performed on this, every musician, every singer, they have to basically sign away that we can use this song any way we want to use it. So um, if we involve a work for hire, I typically just charge double because I don't really want to have to keep up with, okay, the song got put on Yellowstone TV show and Technically, the royalties, it's just too much for me to mess with. Um, so I just charge, again, for a work for hire. So 
Um, okay. So we know that. Cool. And if you um, if you do a song for somebody, is the finished product like you send them back an MP3 or what is it that that you give I back? To them? I send back WAV files, so you can, WAV files. Yeah, you could send me an MP3 um, of the track, but when I sing to that track, I'm going to send you back the highest quality vocal files that I can, which is a WAV file and in mm -hmm. whatever sample rate that you would prefer. And then you would take that to your engineer to, or whomever's gonna do the mixing for you. I do not send you back a mix unless you want one. And I can send you like a rough, just a rough mix because I'm not a mix engineer, but I can mm -hmm. put it back in your track and kind of, if you say, I don't have any way to hear this until a week later, just let me know that. And I don't mind to bounce it down with the band so that you can hear how it's gonna sit with the track. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Cool. All right, thanks, Kathy. Uh, next up, we have uh, Jeff. Jeff Jewett, I believe. Yeah, how's it going? Hey, Jeff. Good. <laughs> How you doing, Matt? Nice to meet you. Yeah, great to meet you. Um, so my question is around, like, I'll do a lot of just quick demo stuff at home, and, you, and you'll post that on, you know, SoundCloud or Facebook or whatever it is. Um, and recently, I did a more professional demo. There was someone else singing on that. Um, so if you want to post that to kind of get a feel for it, like, oh, here's this demo, but people are used to you doing your own stuff. Say, I want to credit Matt Dame. You know, this guy's singing much better than me. <laughs> like, do you want to be credited? Do you want to keep, I mean, especially if you do, if you're doing artist stuff on the side, do you want to keep those things separate? Right. It's a great question. And thank you for asking that. Um, you know, it's, if you, um, cause I do have things out as an artist, right? So if, but what I prefer in that situation, would you say, have your name as the artist, and then in the description of the song, you would say vocals by Matt Dame. As long as you, you couldn't go on to iTunes and type in Matt Dame, and that pops up, and people think, oh, that's a single of his. No, it, you would have to search for your name, and then you can put in the description vocals by whomever your artist, whoever your singer is. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So that way it just kind of keeps it clean. And that way my, you know, if I've got, if I'm working with a manager or a booking agent, you know, then, cause I've definitely had it done the other way where people didn't think to ask and they, I do a demo for them and they think, Oh, well, I'm going to go sell this. This is awesome. Yeah. And I go on iTunes and just type my name in there periodically like I do and go, Oh my gosh, you, this is, you can't do this. So I'll have to have an attorney contact them and give them a cease and desist letter and it's no fun. And, so thank you for asking that. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, because that's a different thing than the work for hire. Hey, let's basically like a master or something like you're talking about for film and TV, where the expectation is, yeah, that's my voice, and hopefully it's going to get out there to a bunch of people, and you've charged right. appropriately. Yep. All right. Good questions. Uh, Robin Earl is here. She said, Matt, you sang some great vocals for us a few years back. Love it. And she asked you to share your contact info, which you already shared your your email address but feel free to share that again we'll just drop it in here a few times make sure everyone has it sure it's matt dame music at gmail.com and the dame is like notre dame so it's d-a-m as in mary e matt dame music at gmail.com well, that pesky matt damon caused a lot of confusion in the early <laughs> days I got my buddy matt dame he just, matt damon no no matt dame he's from batesville it's you'll yeah. you'll figure it out and they did but anyway uh bob wright asked in the chat so y'all be sure if you have any questions uh you can put it in the chat box which is along the top or the bottom toolbar depending on what kind of device you're on or you can hit under participant go and click and it says raise hand and that gives me electronic notification here so want everyone that wants to ask a question at least be able to notify us uh, but bob on the chat asked should you ask a singer to try a key above their comfort level well, I mean, it depends. And that would, you just want to take that case by case. Um, sometimes pushing, if somebody wants me to push a little above where I'm comfortable, because I'm probably going to tell you that my optimal range for the high note, like the highest note in the chorus where I'm hanging the longest, I want that to be an E above middle C to an F sharp. But if you're like, man, I really want, I want some grit and I want some gravel. Could, if you, could you go a step up and, and sing an A flat? or maybe even bump an A above middle C. I mean, yeah, I can. And some, some people can, some people can't. But that you just kind of got to feel that out case by case with your singers, but definitely give them the option and tell them why you want to try higher. Because um, sometimes singers can kind of get lazy. Um, and, and that's, you know, it, 
or just out of habit, you I, I key a song and I try to find that where is it, where in the song am I going to hit the E? Okay, then this needs to be this key. So yeah, if you want more energy, then just communicate that with your singer and say, hey man, I, I really want this to be kind of on the edge, even if it's a little raggedy. I want it to be raw. Then we can work with that. Cool. Good question. And Matt Dame Music, two T's, D-A-M-E Music at gmail.com, you said? Yep. That's that it. All right, I put that in the chat for y'all. Somebody asked me a question about the spelling. So that's so that's it. in the chat. Um, Go ahead and sticky that. <laughs> sticky that, exactly. That's to everybody. All right. I'm uh, just looking through here to see if anyone has their hand raised. If not, I will follow up with the question myself. But don't be shy, y'all. You can chat it. You can hit under participants. Oh, there's Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, so just a question on how much input someone should expect when they contact somebody like you. Uh, like if you're doing a guitar or vocal, you might suggest a, a different variation than a chord, or you might say, well, if we sang it this way, it'd be better. But at the same time, people shouldn't expect too much. They shouldn't expect you to write it, right? Correct. So um, I try to have in my opening conversation, once I know that, let's just say you and I meet and you, you send me a song, I listen to it and I say, yeah, that, that feels like a good fit for me. I can do it. Once we agree to do that, um, then I think in our next conversation, it's going to be, okay, how married are you to the style that you played? Do you have a song maybe in mind that like, you know, I want this to sound like Eric Church's so-and-so song or, you know, just sonically, um, I think it should sound like this. I kind of ask those questions so I know kind of where we're going. Um, and then uh, not, not to mimic, but just to, you know, just to get an idea of like, okay, are you, you know, more John Prine here or are we more John Mellencamp, you know, um, and just try to find, find a way that way that we can work together. And um, I, usually I do pretty candidly ask um, how much flexibility do I have? Do, do you want, I can, I can mimic what you're doing or I can do, if there's places where I can just do what I think it needs, how comfortable are you with those? And I think once, maybe the first time you hire me, you wouldn't know, but if you, maybe the second or third song, you go, you know, I kind of really like what your intuition is, do your thing. So it's a relationship. Yeah, excellent, thanks. Yes, sir, thank you. Yeah, I know one thing that I'll say is like, hey, we're looking for a Jake Owen kind of vibe kind of laid back, not as a great, you know, that sort of stuff. I think that's probably, that, that probably fairly rare or fairly common for like demos that are coming in from other pros. Are they usually referencing, they'll reference maybe a track or a vocalist or something like that to give you. That's almost 100% of the time. They're like, Hey, I'm looking for a Blake Shelton thing. Like a, you know, this one's kind of that old red vibe. The, it's just, it's usually one of the artists, bigger hits that they're, they're kind of aiming for, but yeah, they will say, Hey, this is an R and B thing. Kind of Billy Carrington must be doing something right. That's what we're going for. Just so, yeah, that that's that's very prevalent with the the pros. Cool. So that's good to know. People don't have to do that, but it just gives you some direction. Because I remember from years ago, early on, a, a demo you did or a vocal you did for somebody who was it was obviously a Kenny Chesney pitch, and you were like hitting some of those <laughs> some of those rides, some of that stuff. Like, oh yeah, this is definitely going for Chesney. Yep. So, exactly. Good, good demo singers can do that stuff. And then it's a matter of, hey, do you want them to be right on top of it or not? And then you can narrow your pitches if you're thinking, man, just, just, you know, I found it better to just let the singer be who they are. And as long as it's believable, because that's, that's what you've got to convey, whatever the emotion of your song is. So you don't want to convey it only the way Tim McGraw would hear it, because then if Tim says, no, thanks, I've already got one of those, what else are you going to do with it? So mm -hmm. uh, you kind of find a singer you love, and, and, and let them do their thing as far as, I wouldn't steer them too close to like sounding like, but definitely phrasing like, definitely instrumentation. That's, that's, a, that's a big deal and, and you should do that. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Sam, Sam Moore, hop on. You know, meet yourself. You're around here somewhere. There we go. There you are. When, when someone is first looking for a, a demo singer, when they've never really developed any good relationships, are there any warning signs that you should watch for to, to kind of stay away from, I guess, bad singers or singers that won't give you the best job? Well, I would say um, communication would probably be the very first thing. And one of the only ways early on to know is if, you know, if you reach out to me and, and I haven't messaged you back and, you know, depending on what time of the day 
is. But I mean, if it's during the day, you know, even if I'm busy, I'm here at my computer, I've got my phone on me, I can, I can send a message quickly and most singers can um, because even, even those of us that are the most busy session singers in the world, that we know that that's where our bread's buttered. So we're going to get back with you. So if you're having a, you're seeing some lack of communication, like, oh, the guy hadn't hit me back in two or three days. And that's, that's a warning sign. If something sounds um, overly processed, maybe if you're hearing some samples, I'll, I would lean towards trying to find a, somebody like, if you go on my site, for, for instance, just say you go to soundbetter.com and you look me up. I've got a couple of clips on there and they're full demos. I mean, they're, they're great but a lot of people can sound great on a full demo. You can also go to YouTube and, and you and search their name in YouTube and see if they've got any live performances, see if they've got something where, Oh, I just grabbed my guitar and played this song real quick. Are they good doing that? I mean, that, that's, a, that's maybe a way you can have some checks and balances, but um, you know, try to find out if they've done professional work because the ones that are good probably have been, have, have worked. So not to say that there's not other people that are coming up that just haven't been discovered yet, but right. for the most part, yeah, you're, you're going to find the guys that have, have worked. So. Good question, Sam. Let's see here. Uh, we've got a little bit of time. Let, let's see here. I think you already kind of addressed what your favorite key is kind of where your happy spot is. Um, let's see. Cassandra asked, what steps or process would you recommend for an artist that is interested in getting their foot in the door to get work as a demo singer? Like how closed is the market for that? And, I'm curious about that, especially as the world is changing right now. Sure. And it's, it, it's tough. I mean, to, uh, I've been doing it for 15 years. Um, and, and quickly when I came in, I had a, a, a big a hit songwriter took me under his wing, took me to the studios personally, walked me in there and said, Hey, I've been working with him. You need to use him too. And here's some songs that he did for me. Boom. I mean, I couldn't have been, that couldn't have been set on a T any nicer for me to just hit a home run. So um, uh, that being said, you still got to be able to deliver if you were to get that chance. Chances are you won't. I mean, uh, having a relationship with somebody that's going to walk you in, um, it's very, very difficult. And I would say in 15 years of singing, how many new people have I seen come in that really get established? Less than 10. Wow. Less than 10 in 15 years that are, that are making their living singing. So um, it is a very, very, very small uh, chance of anybody doing this for a living um that being said i, I did it and, and you know it, uh, it was just a small chance for me um so i would say if i if i didn't have a songwriter that was going to take me around i would find a couple of the the busier studios in in nashville if this is where you're looking to do it or in la or new york wherever find the studios make an electronic press kit make you know give make it easy for them to hear you and say hey i whatever your capabilities are, I can record from home. I can come to you. I can sing my own harmonies, be able to do all those things, learn quickly, um, be on time. Early's on time. On time is late. Be early. Um, respect people's time. I mean, it, it can be done, but it's, it's mm -hmm. a tough market right now, but that's where I would start. Yeah. And I would say, you know, Matt's rates are a lot higher now than they were in the beginning 15 years oh. ago. That's the thing too, is that if he came in charging what he's charging now, he wouldn't have gotten, he wouldn't have gotten the work. No, even if it's free. I mean, people think, well, I don't want to cheapen myself. And I, no, do what you got to do. If your voice is great and you want to get it heard, tell somebody, hey, I'll sing this for you for nothing. And if you don't use it, fine. And if it ends up, if you like it and you want to hire me, the next time my rate will be this. I mm -hmm. mean, there's ways to do that to kind of incentivize people to use you if they know, well, I can't really lose. Why wouldn't I? You know? Yeah. And I mean, I've, you know, I do these play for publisher events. And so many times, you know, we're gathering up these demos from the songwriting pro community and, and we'll play them for a publisher. And so many times you're like, who's singing on that? It's just a natural question. If the vocal's good That's right. or if it's bad, <laughs> they'll ask you like, who's singing on that? It's you, yeah. right? Yeah. Don't do that anymore. But it's a question they ask. And actually, I mean, Matt and my story, we went to high school together and um, you know, we, that song, I played that song for that, for that hit writer. Cause I wasn't a hit writer then. Uh, Bob Regan, because Matt and I had written some songs together back in Little Rock, Arkansas, and went to the studio, and he did a guitar vocal at Blue Chair Studio in Ooh. Austin, Arkansas. And, you know, I went, I went to Nashville, and I played, you know, and that song was in 
my song stack, I got a chance to sit down with a hit writer, Bob Regan. And right away, he's like, who's singing on that? I'm like, that's my buddy, Matt. He's like, does he look like an artist? <laughs> that was the next question. Uh, yeah. And yeah. so immediately he's like, this dude sings. And, uh, you know, you were, I think, selling police equipment at the time or were a cop at the time or something like that, you know, you, back in Arkansas. Yep. And, you know, I gave him your info and then that just took off. You know, I didn't, other than hiring you, you know, Bob really just rode hurt on that. And, and, and so maybe, you know, riding with people that are, I mean, that's how a lot of people get hurt is the co-write. Yep. So anyway, that's my claim to fame. Yep. As I was same hometown, Matt got all the vocal chops and I got a few of the words. Got a few of the words. That's right. Mark Martin drives fast and uh, Ryan Mount throws a football out of our hometown. That's none of our skill sets overlap. So, all right here. Uh, let's see here. I think some new folks just joined. All right. Um, just a comment from Michael Crockett. Matt did my demo. Uh, she devil a couple of years ago and I was so happy with hundred percent done remotely. I was in Virginia, the owner of the studio in Nashville, Matt recorded it, remarked how professional he was. And he is, if you're looking for a great male, great, great male demo singer, Matt's the guy. So thank oh, you. Michael. Michael, I appreciate that. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, this is good for the, yeah, it's warm fuzzies. Uh, Greg Manusco, or Man, sorry, Greg Mancuso, I guess, uh, asked, how good quality does my recording have to be to have Matt demo it? Well, it depends. Like, if, you, if you're talking about, you can send me the roughest of work tapes. I mean, just if you play guitar and sing and you just think, oh, I just play awful and I sing awful, that's fine. I can, I can make it, you know, sound good. But if you're sending me a track to sing to, um, you know, it doesn't have to be great, but it needs to be in time. It needs to be in tune. Um, you know, I would, I would, if you're going to send me a track, make sure it's tracked to a, to a click track where it's consistently in the same meter. Um, you know, I mean, but it doesn't have to be anything other than a, a, a keyboard track or a guitar track. It can be one instrument. That's fine. Cool. Uh, Robin Earl jumped on here. You know, she has a studio and record more pop than country but they are open to new demo session singers and use new people when appropriate for the song. And so they, uh, they drop their info in there. So I'll go ahead and drop it. I'm, I've been hearing about Robin and, and Gary Earl for years. Uh, so they, they've been around, you know, uh, so Gary Earl.com. So that's G A R Y E A R L.com or Robin Earl R O B I N E A R L Robin Earl at me.com. So yeah, they've, they've been around Nashville for a, for a while and they've been, making a lot of cutting a lot of tracks and stuff yep so all right let's see here i know we've about reached our time any any last question anybody have or matt um any any parting thoughts just uh encouragement heads up or or anything i guess um you know matt dame music at gmail.com yep that's um, the email. um the, you know i would say um you know for first of all thank you guys for logging on and and, ha and being interested enough to to want to hear what I have to say. Um, you know, I've got a lot of, ex a lot of experience over the last 15 years of singing sessions. And I think I can help people kind of get through the process of, cause it's, it's nerve wracking spending, spending money these days. It is, it's, it's like, it's an investment. And some people look at it as well. I don't play golf and I don't water ski and I don't vacation. This is my, this is what I do for fun, but I want it to be excellent. Um, you know, just find those trusted sources find the find the studios that people are using and there's multiple ones i mean there there there's there are a lot of great options but just do your due diligence find find the trusted sources um you know go to places like brent and and let him tell you hey i've, I've been in nashville i've had these cuts i've done all these things and here are some options there are definitely trusted providers you should use the resources given to you um because there's always somebody that will say they'll do it cheaper and they'll do it better and maybe they will, but you just don't know. So thank you guys for coming on and spending an hour with us. Um, I appreciate you supporting my friend Brent. He's got a great thing going and uh, yeah, man. Thank y'all. Well, yeah. Thank you, Matt. And thanks everybody for showing up. Uh, you know, if you're watching the replay of this, uh, this is know the pro we do this at least quarterly at songwritingpro.com. Uh, and this will live on in the members area. So like I said, we have, you know, CMA winning songwriters. We have Hall of Fame songwriters. We have producers. We have publishers. We have all kinds of folks uh, that are giving their wisdom and doing this stuff for us. And it's all in the members area. If you're curious about 
checking out Songwriting Pro and the Songwriting Pro Plus membership, you can just go to songwritingpro.com. There's a little sneak peek button up at the top and gives you a partial list of, of who all's in the, the video archives that we're, we're talking to and we do events. We actually have uh, three more events going on this month. And so we're gonna, I'll give you the quick rundown on that. On Monday night, we have a jam session, which stands for just ask me because I do love acronyms. We call them Baxter names around here. And so we have a jam session, which is something we do every month, um, but we're, it's open house month at Songwriting Pro. So these are an hour long. As some of you are familiar faces. I know y'all like to show up for those, uh, but I'll start off teaching on a topic, something that's uh, kind of burning a hole in my brain and talk about that for 10 to 15 minutes then we open it up to your question. So it's really similar format to this, except I'm kind of the guest and you can ask me your questions about the art, the craft, the business of songwriting. Uh, all those for a few years now are also archived in the Songwriting Pro members area. So we have that coming up on Monday night. It's the same Zoom link as this. So making it real easy so you can join us uh, Monday night. That's open to everybody this month because it's open house month. Tuesday night is the Co-Writer Cafe and that's something we do at least every other month over at Songwriting Pro. We're doing it more often these days because we're, you know, we need some community. Let's face it these days. I'm, I'm glad to look at some of y'all instead of just my kids. Anyway, so Co-Writer Cafe is for folks that are looking to find co-writers. And it's a Zoom link. It's going to be the same link this month as, as this one tonight. It's going to be Tuesday night. Basically, we, we all hop on. Uh, and then I, I put you in breakout rooms which are like three to four writers in a room for about 10 minutes. And you just chat and get to know each other and be like, Hey, I'm James and I'm from Ohio and I'm, I do pop country stuff. I'm looking for, you know, this kind of co-writer. I do mainly melody. I'm looking for more of a lyricist and be like, Hey, I'm Debbie and I'm from Dallas. Wait, that, that's somewhere. No, I'm from Debbie and I'm from Des Moines's. <laughs> wow. That's from, Never mind. We won't go there. I'm from Des Moines and, <laughs> and I do melodies. <laughs> so anyway, so we get in there for about 10 minutes and uh, that's funny. I'm, I'm done now. So anyway, you get in there for about 10 minutes and you get to know each other and you chat and then I bring everyone back into the main group and then we, uh, we shuffle the rooms and send you out with a couple of new people to meet. So it's, it's, you're not trying to write a song together. You just, Hey, you're just meeting some other songwriters. If, if, you know, you think, Hey, this may be something we want to explore. You can, you can exchange information in there or you can message each other on the private message app. Uh, which is part of the Songwriting Pro membership. If you want to do that, or you can reach out, you know, you can share your information there if you want to. But we usually get about three or four rounds of that done, just depending on how many people show up. And so it may be a chance to get and hang and, and talk to, you know, 12 different co-writers, like in small groups, potential co-writers, and if nothing else, maybe find some new friends or find some people there in the same boat. Uh, so that's the Co-Writer Cafe. That happens at least every other month. And then on, uh, let's see, on the 20th, Eighth, I believe. Let me check my calendar here. It is, yes, Tuesday the 28th, where I'm having a special event with Cherise Voltore of Global Songwriters Connection. Cherise, a fellow Archie like me and Matt. Uh, she is a sweetheart, and Global Songwriters uh, Connection is, is a great resource for songwriters like y'all. Some of you may already know Cherie and, and what she does, but uh, she's also in the business of helping songwriters. She used to be with NSAI, and that's how I met her. And we're just going to talk about, you know, just trying sorry, to give some sorry, hope sorry. and inspiration for uh, folks that are, you know, uh, kind of in the boat that we're in. So we're going to have an hour long event where you can ask questions and that kind of stuff too. So we got a lot going on over the next uh, week or two, the rest of this month. And it's all the same link as what you're watching right now. Uh, we would love to have you join us. And also, you know, if you're interested in the Songwriting Pro, find out more about it. Just go to songwritingpro.com slash inside. And it gives you like a sneak peek on what's going on over there. But uh, anyway, Matt, thank you so much uh, for giving us, you know, your time uh, sneaking away from Amber and uh, heading down the Matt cave and sharing your, um, you know, just what you've picked up over the years with us. So I really appreciate it. I think it's gonna be super helpful for folks here tonight and those watching the replay. And Jim, you just joined us, but you can watch the replay later on, buddy. And, I watch, uh, I watch the whole thing. All right. Good deal. All yeah. right. Thought you were hiding from us. Uh, no. But Anyway, Matt, thank you so much. Um, Y'all be sure and check out mattdanemusic at gmail.com or you can also check them out through airgigs.com, soundbetter.com, any place you find demos or, or vocal. So, all right, I will let y'all go. God bless. Y'all stay safe. Happy late Easter. Me too. You later. Thank you. Good night, y'all. Thanks, Matt. Bye. Good night.